Good day, grade 12 learners! I am your teacher, Gerald K. Binabalta. Welcome to another episode of Senior High Tech TV. How's your day? I hope you are now ready to unleash your creative writing juices with our new lesson for today. Please bring out your pen, notebook, learning activity sheets, and assessments with you. But before we dig deeper with our new lesson for today, let's have a review of our past episode. Last time, we had discussed about intertextuality. What is again intertextuality? Intertextuality is a literary device that creates an interrelationship between texts and generates related understanding in separate works. These references are made to influence the reader and add layers of depth to a text based on the reader's prior knowledge and understanding. Last time, we had also discussed the different intertextual features. What are these? We have parody, allusion, and passage. Let me measure if you can still remember the different intertextual features with this activity. Identify whether the following statements describe an allusion, a parody, or a passage. Are you ready? Let's begin! It is an intertextual feature that references a person, place, thing, or event. Each of these concepts can be real or imaginary, referring to any from fiction, to folklore, to historical events, and religious manuscripts. What intertextual feature is described? That's right! The answer is allusion. How about this one? It is used when one piece of writing uses many of the same elements of another but does it in a new and funny way. What intertextual feature is described? Excellent! The answer is parody. How about the next one? It is a comical imitation of another work. It stops at mocking or making fun of the work. What is this? Very good! Again, that is parody. How about the next item? It borrows elements from one or more works and reconfigures them to create something new. It is generally a respectful type of borrowing that gives credit to the original, and it's not plagiarism. What is this? Great job! That is passage. How about the last item? What intertextual feature is used when a woman says to her husband, Thanks, Romeo! after he's offered some type of romantic gesture. What intertextual feature was used? That's right! The intertextual feature used was allusion. Very good, grade 12 learners! It seems like you are now ready to move on with our new lesson. But before that, let me present to you our lesson objectives. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to define one act play, enumerate the characteristics of one act play, and conceptualize a character, setting, or plot for one act play using an illustration. Let's get it started. Last time, we had discussed about drama. Today, we will focus on one type of drama called one-act play. But what is one-act play? One-act play is a play that has only one act, as a distinct from plays that occurs over several acts. One-act plays may consist of one or more scenes. The famous one-act play, Monkey's Paw, was first staged as a curtain raiser 
and it proved to be more entertaining than the main drama. It may be said to mark the beginning of modern one-act play. The origin of one-act play may be traced to the very beginning of drama in ancient Greece. Cyclops, a play of the forest god by Euripides, is an early example. One-act play requires no elaborate settings and costumes, and so comes in handy to be staged by amateur dramatic societies and clubs. We have several examples of one-act play. Here are some. Anton Chekhov, A Marriage Proposal. August Strindberg, Faria. Motherly Love, The First Warning. Thornton's Wilder, The Long Christmas Dinner. Eugene Lonesco, The Bald Soprano. Arthur Miller, A Memory of Two Mondays. Samuel Beckett, Crap's Last Day. Israel Horowitz, Line. Edward Albee, The Goat, or Who is Sylvia? There are also characteristics that set aside one act play from other forms of drama. These are the following. One act play is a play that has only one act but may consist of one or more scenes. One act plays are usually written in concise manner. It deals with a single dominant situation and aims at producing a single effect. It deals with only one theme developed through one situation to one climax to produce the maximum of effect. It treats problems of everyday life such as marriage, punishment of crimes, labor conditions, divorce, among many others. One act play, like longer drama, should have a beginning, a middle, and an end. It may be divided into four stages. The exposition, the conflict, the climax, and the denoma. The exposition is usually brief and it serves as the introduction of the play. It is through the conflict that the action of the drama develops. It is the very backbone of the one-act play. Climax is the turning point of the drama. It is an important part of the one-act play and constitutes its moment of supreme interest. The denoma is a very brief and often overlapping with climax. Action begins right at the very start of the one-act play. There are no breaks in the action. That is, it is continuous since it's a short play. There are no intervals. Everything superfluous is to be strictly avoided as the play is short and the action takes place within a short period of time. It introduces elaborate stage directions to maximize the time taken by the action itself. The creation of mood or atmosphere is indispensable to its success. There are three dramatic unities observed in one act play. The unities are the unit of action, the unit of time, and the unity of place. It aims at simplicity of plot, concentration of action, and unity of impression. It does not rely on spectacular effects and common dramatic tricks of old. The characters of one act play are limited in number. Generally, there are not more than two to three major characters in the play. There is no full development of characters. All the different aspects of a character are not presented. The attention is focused on only one or two salient aspects of character and they are brought out by placing the characters in different situations. The author implies the past and intimates the future of a character by presenting a crucial moment in the life of that character. There is an influence of realism. The characters in modern one-act play are ordinary men and women. It depicts characters that seem to be real and related to everyday life. It must present a question for which the audience eagerly awaits the answer. Its language is simple and can be followed without any strain. All superfluity is to be avoided in the dialogue. The best dialogue is that which does several things at one time. Every word is to be carefully chosen and sentences must be compact and condensed. Effort should be made to say whatever is to be said in the least possible words. Thus, 
language of the dialogue should be simple, brief, and easy to understand. Long speeches, arguments, and long sentences would be out of place and would lessen the charm and interest of the play. Those are the different characteristics of one-act play. Is one-act play clear to you now? Let's test it out with our activity titled, Check This Out! Read the following characteristics. Write one check if the statement describes one-act play. And write two checks if not. Are you ready? Let's begin. It deals with only one theme developed through the situation to one climax to produce the maximum of effect. Check this out! That's right! The answer is one check. It is a characteristic of a one-act play. How about the next one? It has many characters. Generally, there are more than two to three principal characters in the play. Check this out. Very good! The answer is two checks. It is not a characteristic of a one-act play. How about the next one? It is usually written in a concise manner. It deals with a single dominant situation and aims in producing a single effect. Check this out! Very good! The answer is one check. It is a characteristic of a one-act play. How about the next one? The language of the dialogue should be elaborate and complex. Long speeches, arguments, and long sentences are often used. Check this out! Excellent! The answer is two checks. It is not a characteristic of a one-act play. How about the next one? There is no full development of characters. All the different aspects of a character are not presented. Check this out. Very good! The answer is one check. It is a characteristic of a one-act play. Great job! Seems like you are now familiar with one app play. But to further test that out, open your learning activity sheets and assessment for week 3 and accomplish advanced activity 3 pages 5 to 6. Conceptualize a character, setting, or plot for a one app play about coronavirus disease. You may choose among the following tasks. Draw or cut out pictures of a character and write a brief description about him or her. Draw or cut out pictures of a setting and write a brief description about it. Or draw or cut a picture of a plot and write a brief description about this. Very good grade 12 learners! You are now a step ahead in your creative writing journey. Next time, we will tackle more on creative writing, specifically the staging modalities. Again, this is your teacher, Gerald K. V. Navalta. Study smart and keep safe. See you next episode. Bye!